Hello, I'm the Budget Modeler and welcome to episode 8 of my SPAD 13 build. You may have noticed I have a different intro. I'd just like to thank the people who developed my video editor for removing my brand from their update. Cheers Mavavi! First things first, I'm just going to go around the decals and pop any air bubbles that I find just to get rid of them. So, here we go with a speedy uppy thing. Right, now that I've popped those, I'm just going to go over some parts of the decals that haven't dropped into the recesses. So, I'm using my homemade decal solution. If you haven't checked out the video yet, have a look. It's in my tutorial section. Now for some more touch-ups, this time on the tail. You can see the white parts will be touching up where the decals didn't cover it properly. I'm using the same blue for this as I did on the nose, Tamiya X4. So let's give it a good shake, good stir and get those edges sorted. Well, that's all done, the wheels as well. So while that's drying, let's start on the base that I'm going to be using for this. I got this deep picture frame from Hobbycraft for about four quid, and it will do nicely for what I want. The spad fits in there perfectly, so let's open it up and dismantle it. Not the spad, the picture frame, obviously. Remember, Keep the glass, as this is great for cutting your PE on. The frame on the right is the part that gives the frame its depth, and it's what we'll be using. Firstly, I have to cut a piece of EVO foam to the right side, so I'm using the inside of the frame as a guide. Remember folks, always take care when using sharp implements. I did have an adult present during this process, There we go, that fits nicely. Now let's cover it in PVA to seal it off. I found I had a gap in it, so I used some masking tape just to close it up. A 
At this point, I took it into the house to dry off as it's warmer than my man cave. And I had a bit of a brainwave. Boy, that hurt. Decided to pop it in the oven on the lowest heat to help the drying, obviously. Well, I have to say I had a lucky outcome. The EVA looked very flat before it went in with no undulation time. Doing what I did warped the EVA and gave it some nice little contours. During editing, I noticed that the EVA was still shrinking. Check out the bottom edge of it. Cool. Next, I took my trusty heat gun and sealed the rest of the EVA. Heat sealing it stops the EVA from soaking up anything you put on there. Ooh, look at all those gaps. Time to get them filled and the surface created. I'm using polyfiller. Other fillers are available. After leaving it for 10 minutes to dry a bit, I got down to smoothing it out. I did this by dipping my gloved fingers into some water and very, very gently smoothing it out. The filler doesn't need to be perfectly smooth, as no air filled at the time was smooth. Just smooth enough to make it look good. There we go, it should look something like this. So, off into the house to dry. No, not the oven. Right, while that is drying, I'm gonna try and do something about this outer brace. It's really annoying me. See if we can get it straight. What I'm gonna do is just cut a very small piece out to hopefully get it to straighten up. Okay, so I cut a little too much out, but thank you for sprue glue. We can fill it with that and hopefully get it sorted. Well, that's looking better. Let's take that up in the right position and leave it to dry. That's looking better. Now for some more PE. I'm going to be doing the tail section. There are the struts that go under the tail and the connectors for the rudder. There goes one of the wheels. I didn't notice that until later on. But anyway, let's crack on.
Right, so there's the rubber connectors glued on. Now let's get this wheel fixed back on. As I've got the spad upside down, which is allowing the wheel to dry, let's take the opportunity to get these struts glued into place. Firstly, I removed all the primer from it. And guess what? Yay! It's time for the speedy uppy thing. Seeing as I'm failing miserably to do my show and tells, here's a random one. Time for some fun, rigging the rudder connectors. A quick swig of coffee before I start to thread the rigging line. I should have had Jack Daniels. Okay, so I'm going to play this bit in real time, as I just spent nearly five minutes trying to thread the right hand side, I was getting a bit miffed with it. So I changed sides, did the left, and would you believe it, I got it first time. Bloody typical. Well, look at that. Would you believe it? So, on with the right hand side. See if we can get that one done just as easily now. There's another three minutes gone. I tried that many times that I had bent and frayed the line. So here I'm just snipping the end back a bit. So here we go again. Yes, get in there. It only took me 10 minutes to thread one eye. The issue was that I had put the connector on a slight angle. So when I tried to feed it, it wouldn't go in properly. Once I straightened it up, the thread went straight in. It's got nothing to do with my old eyesight at all. Honest guff. Now, to glue them in place and snip the ends of the thread. Wish me luck. My show and tells are abysmal. I'm really sorry about that, guys. Promise to do better in the next build series. And that's an absolute cracker. Now it's time for the vertical stabiliser struts. I made these from fine gauge wire as the fishing line was too flimsy. Mrs. what's going on here? They went on a little too easily. 
Okay, that's worrying. What disaster is going to happen now? Now time for a bit of painting. I'm using my own mix of Vallejo Mahogany 71036 and a couple of drops of white, thinned down to an almost glaze. It's just to give the impression of wood. There's the wood done, and now time for the silver, X32 Titanium Silver from Tamiya. That's the silver done. Now to do some work on the base. Here you can see how the filler has dried. Off screen I primed the base in Apex Black, it's rattle can spray that I got from my local motor factors. This is what it looks like. And here is one of the reasons why we wear gloves. Right, here's the board, looking dry. I'm going to paint this just one flat colour of uh, burnt umber. So I'll be mixing the burnt umber with some thinners on the tray. Feels dry. This is what it looks like with the aircraft on it. Mm, that'll do. So I'll put that to one side and let's start mixing paint. So my paint is at the right consistency, let's slap a load on the base. There we go, that's the base painted. Right, I'm going to leave this to dry. Remember folks, the job's not done till the paperwork's finished. Here you go, another random show and tell. Sorry? I don't know why. I just make it. I suppose I'm trying to overcompensate for my early failures. Now to give it a coat of X22 gloss varnish from Tamiya. There's the coat of gloss I did, now time to carry on with the base. I'm going to be doing some dry brushing, so let's start off with Tamiya XF52 Flat Earth. I'm using one of my better halves old makeup blusher brushes here. They make great dry brushes, but remember folks, ask permission first, otherwise you'll be in big bother. Next I'm using Tamiya Desert Yellow XF59. When you're doing the lightest colour, dry brush gently as you only want to pick out the high spots.
And that's what it looks like when you're done. Right, this seems a good place to end the episode. Um, again, really sorry about the lack of branding. I will look at that and see if we can get something else sorted. So remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel, help it grow, get the message out there to as many models as possible, please. Like the video and ring my bell. Remember folks, stay safe, keep on modeling.